here we have a case of chronic aortic regurgitation ideally the patient should be examined in sitting position but in this case we advised immobilization in this patient because of his uh, traumatic compressive myelopathy so now here we are going to elicit all the peripheral signs in chronic aortic regurgitation here we go here we can see the dancing carotids which is corrigan sign corrigan sign should not be confused with the corrigan's pulse which is water hammer pulse here we can see the corrigan sign which are dancing carotids here we can clearly appreciate the dancing carotids prominent carotid pulsations now here we can see the apex speed which is shifted outwards and downwards which is hyperdynamic in character here we can clearly observe the hyperdynamic apex speed on inspection which is shifted downwards and outwards it is outwards to the mid clavicular line uh, in the sixth intercostal space and shifted outwards now we are going to elicit the water hammer pulse which is also called as corrigan's pulse in this patient we have to raise the patient's arm gently and then we have to palpate the radial artery in this manner here we observe a rapid uh, we feel a rapid up stroke followed by a rapid down stroke the rapid up stroke is due to the uh, systolic increase in stroke volume during the systole and the rapid down stroke is due to uh, diastolic runoff into the left ventricle the rapid diastolic runoff and the decreased peripheral vascular resistance contribute to the rapid down stroke the decreased peripheral vascular resistance is because when the blood is regurgitating jet of blood in the left ventricle is pushed the uh, there is increased stroke volume due to the increased stroke volume the peripheral aortic sinus and the carotid sinus receptors are getting stretched due to the stretching of the aortic sinus and the carotid sinus there is a reflex decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance due to the decreased peripheral vascular resistance and the diastolic runoff there is rapid downstroke downstroke so the, uh, here we get the corrigan's pulse also called as water hammer pulse also called as uh, collapsing pulse so that is a collapsing pulse now we are going to demonstrate the uh, rosenbach sign rosenbach sign is the hepatic pulsations so here in the right hypochondrium we are going to palpate the liver so on gently palpating the liver here we can observe uh, i can feel the hepatic pulsations which is a uh, rosenbach sign in chronic aortic regurgitation then similarly on the opposite side in the left uh, hypochondriac region uh, when i palpate the spleen here i can uh, feel the splenic pulsations which is called as gerhard sign clearly uh, i can appreciate the gerhard sign splenic pulsations in this patient which is gerhard sign also called as sailor's sign uh, now i am going to elicit the drop sign drop sign is pistol shot femorals i am going to auscultate at the uh, femoral femoral artery with the diaphragm of the stethoscope i uh, i should get a booming sound which indicates the presence of drop sign in aortic regurgitation there is booming type of pistol shot femorals in this uh, uh, femoral artery uh, on this femoral artery when i auscultated on the femoral artery then uh, now I, uh, now i shall elicit i will elicit the uh, durosis sign durosis sign is when i auscultate the uh, femoral artery with the uh, bell of the stethoscope by applying pressure or pressure over the femoral artery with the bell of the stethoscope a diastolic murmur is heard this is durosis sign so i am auscultating with the bell of the stethoscope by applying a slight pressure over the femoral artery i get a diastolic murmur on palpating the uh, uh, femoral artery with the uh, applying slight pressure over the femoral artery with the help of bell of the stethoscope now i am going to elicit the lincoln sign which is popliteal artery pulsations in the popliteal fossa now i gently lift the leg of the patient and i palpate in the popliteal fossa there is pulsations in the popliteal fossa which indicates the lincoln sign in aortic regurgitation now another sign is sherman sign usually uh, it is elicited in uh, patients above 75 years of age uh, it should be elicited at the uh, extensor hallucis longus tendon on the tibialis anterior where there is uh, where there is uh, dorsalis pedis artery there is uh, uh, exaggerated pulsations of the dorsalis pedis artery here we can see the 
pulsations of the dorsalis pedis artery which is uh, which is sherman sign in aortic regurgitation now here we see the winkish sign these are the capillary pulsations at the distal nail beds so here here we can see blanching followed by the filling of the nail bed here we can see the distal capillary pulsations blanching followed by the filling pale area followed by a uh, rosy rosy pinkish area which is alternatingly seen over the nail bed this is winkish sign now uh, we are going to elicit the landolfi sign which is alternating constriction and dilatation of the pupil here you can see alternating constriction and dilatation of the pupil which is a lindolfi sign the constriction occurs during the systole and the dilatation of the pupil occurs during the diastole alternating it should it should babu alternating constriction and dias, uh, dilatation of the pupil during systole and diastole respectively this is lindolfi sign now we'll check the murmur uh, usually there are two, two kinds of murmurs can be heard in aortic regurgitation uh, one is uh, uh, early dia early diastolic murmur uh, and the other is austin flint murmur austin flint murmur occurs due to the regurgitant jet which hits the anterior mitral leaflet due to the hitting of the regurgitant jet to the anterior mitral leaflet the anterior mitral leaflet gets vibrated and produces a sound uh, which is called austin flint murmur it is a mid diastolic murmur and uh, uh, this uh, early diastolic murmur should be elicited the patient should be in sitting position and uh, lean forward and should be in uh, end of the expiration at the end of the expiration with patient leaning forward in sitting position ideally you have to elicit the uh, early diastolic murmur in case of aortic regurgitation in the aortic area which is present in the right inter right second intercostal space close to the sternum In this case, we see uh, uh, early diastolic murmur after the uh, immediately after the S2. We can clearly appreciate the early diastolic murmur in this case.